Good morning. Welcome to Old St. Mary's Church as we celebrate the Eucharist on this, the sixth Sunday of Easter. I'm Carl Bernardo, and Scott and I will lead the music. While only the cantor is able to sing during this phase of reopening the church, the music and readings for this Mass can be found in this week's worship aid. Feel free to follow along on your phone or device if you'd like. Just click the Sunday Worship Aid link on the front page of our parish website, oldsaintmarys.com. Presiding at liturgy is Father Johnson, and preaching is Father Schoberly. Our gathering song is, All Are Welcome. Let us be gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, both here in church and joining us from a distance, let us pray for hearts and minds open to the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, you died that we might live. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you rose to new life and promised that we too will rise. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us your friends and command us to love as we are loved. 
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. Thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, glory to God in the highest and on earth these two people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth these two people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father, Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him and, falling at his feet, paid him homage. Peter, however, raised him up, saying, Get up. I myself am also a human being. Then Peter proceeded to speak and said, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the word. The circumcised believers who had accompanied Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit should have been poured out on the Gentiles also, for they could hear them speaking in tongues and glorifying God. Then Peter responded, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit 
even as we have? He ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever was without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as expiation for our sins. The word of the Lord. If we have 
of love and we dwell in the Lord. God will protect us from fire and sword. Fill us with love and the peace of his word. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves, because the slave does not know what their master is doing. I have called you friends, because I have told you everything that I have heard from my Father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. This may sound like a curveball. Uh, when you are thinking about music, and I'm talking church music here, do you prefer Christmas music or Easter music? Now, it'll be a left hand for Christmas, it'll be a right hand for Easter show. Okay. So, this is, this is interesting, because when I've done this before, I've generally gotten that Christmas music wins out, but you're probably 50-50, you're divided out there, and some of you are raising both hands, so that's good. <laughs> uh, and I tend to think most people like Christmas music because there's more of it. It's usually simpler, it's a simpler holiday, it's easier to get the concept, God loves us, God sends his son, newborn baby in a crib or a manger, stroller or car seat nowadays, and I would think especially on Mother's Day, the infant child is a simpler image. On the other hand, Easter music can be much bigger and generally more complicated and not as simple, often longer, because it tends toward the whole passion, death, and resurrection theme around the adult Jesus. And if you are thinking about church celebrations, it's easier to grab Christmas in one thought. Baby born, angels, shepherds, magi show up, big star, glory in the night, glory in the light. We zip through the newborn babe, Mary, holy family, and epiphany in what? Maybe three weeks, maybe three weeks tops. And even the lead up to Christmas is only a mere four weeks long-ish, if, if that. And Easter, well, Easter is a 40-day-plus run-up that we call Lent. And then we hit the three days that are celebrated as one, the Holy Triduum, and then Easter Sunday for a week, and then the Easter season for eight weeks of Sundays, 50 days total and all. And it is tricky holding on to the power of Easter. The first Sunday 
no problem, full glorification. The Alleluia's are back, and the Easter Vigil that so dwarfs the Midnight Mass in spectacle, scope, and meaning that you can ride the high from the Easter Vigil, that one celebration for weeks, if not months. To help us hold on to the mystery of the resurrection, the church is clever. We back out a bit to that second Sunday of Easter. Always we kind of are dealing with the Doubting Thomas, and more recently we add on to Doubting Thomas Divine Mercy Sunday, God's presence in that way. The third Sunday of Easter is kind of a potpourri Sunday. You're, you're never quite sure what, what it's all about because on the third Sunday of Easter, whichever year we're in, we fill in with the final stories of Jesus' post-resurrection appearance. They're all completed on that third Sunday. We've heard everything that's been written about Easter at that point. And we can say then, we've run out of post-resurrection experiences and we've still got five weeks of Easter to go. Now what, we, what do we do? And what we do is we shift. We shift to other images of Christ. The fourth Sunday of Easter is called Shepherd Sunday. And the shepherd is represented in all of the Gospels. In church decor and architecture, the earliest artwork in the church is the portrayal of Jesus as the good shepherd. Before anything else, Jesus, good shepherd. Now, the fifth Sunday, last week, if you remember, uh, and if you do, you were probably helped by Deacon Mark's references to cell phones and networking that involves us, and no surprise, connects us, that he, what he did was to connect us to the vision of the vine and the branches, connected, connected to. That was clear, okay? But the fifth Sunday of Easter in years A and C, or for that matter, the sixth and seventh Sundays of Easter, the themes seem to be all over the place. However, they all come from John's gospel. Even the vine and the branches is part of it. And John, for us, is tough. Aside from our clarity around the feasts of Ascension and the Feast of Pentecost, nothing like getting near to the end of Easter to have the one-two punch of those two feasts, John's gospel for the fifth sixth and seventh Sundays of Easter sort of seems like we're letting the intensity and power of Easter fade away. And that's not really true at all. But I agree with you. It is really difficult to keep a party going for eight weeks. Uh, it's easy. Um, it's as easy to do that as it is trying to defeat the coronavirus by staying focused on all the preventions that we are trying to do all the time. It's difficult to do. But here's the secret. And it's a secret that I never have heard anyone talk about, or at least I never remember anyone talking about. All the non-feast last three weeks of Easter, of the Easter readings, are from the same event. The same event. So when, when you heard the beginning of the gospel today, Jesus said to his disciples, it wasn't just the general Jesus talking to his disciples everywhere else in the gospel. They were at the event that we know as the Last Supper or the First Eucharist. It reframes the context. The context. Now, now think about this a minute. With Easter, we celebrate everything. Meaning that with Easter, we celebrate Christmas. So if we know Christmas is about God's love coming into our world, we celebrate Jesus' life, you know, his, his whole history, how he healed people, how he talked to people, how he changed their lives, and his suffering and his dying and his being with us after the resurrection, and it's all a big deal. In Acts today, the Holy Spirit comes upon the unsuspecting but heart totally prepared Cornelius and his household. And in the letter of John, we hear why. God loves us first and is going to act for us first. And the gospel, and we don't usually realize this, the whole love bit and commandment bit at the Last Supper, the disciples in the story 
have just had their feet washed. They've just had their feet washed. And for four chapters in John's Gospel, meaning it is the longest account of the Last Supper that we have of any of the, of any of the Gospels, in it, Jesus is telling them and telling us how to love. So for four chapters, I mean, we've got the washing of feet, and eventually we're going to get to the Garden of Gethsemane. But for four chapters, Jesus is telling us about this love, and he's giving us a commandment. So there are so many people in our culture today that want to tell people, you can't do this or you can do this because the gospel tells you to. But if you're looking for the big one, the big commandment that Jesus gives, and it's straightforward in our face, love one another, take care of one another. Don't care what your political persuasion is, don't care what else you're trying to do. If you don't love first, then you don't get that. So we have bookended the story of the resurrection with the Passover supper on Holy Thursday night. And the other end of the bookend is with every Eucharist where we gather to celebrate today, this one. Eucharist is an Easter meal. And as an Easter meal, every action Jesus has taken on our behalf is now given to us. The final weeks of Easter are us being here in this time loop of the one Eucharist of Jesus. We started with the Easter exuberance on Easter Sunday, and we've tried to sustain the momentum of Jesus rising for all these weeks. We also have to remember that sometimes momentum brings us to awe, and quiet basking in the presence of God is also part of the resurrection immovable, unshakable blessing and presence. As we each try to figure the, pol- the politics, the medical realities, the social justice needs of our day, and how we are supposed to act in those and other countless situations, all those that surround us, this being at Jesus' Easter meal is the only real way forward for a Christian. Peter at the Last Supper said, Lord, you're too good to wash my feet. And Jesus said, if I don't wash your feet, you will have no part in what I do. This menial task that identifies how Christians are always supposed to act comes before our text in the gospel reading today. It must be for the disciples, hearing him talk about this after doing the foot washing, it must be amplifying in their minds. And I hope it amplifies in our minds, too. And taking it then to the nth degree, we will see Jesus pick up the bread, and he'll say, this is my body, and then he'll tear it to shreds. And then he'll give it to them and say, eat. He will then take a heavy, dark cup of wine, and he will say, this is my blood, and share it with them, and share it with them. They are to become what they eat and drink, the Savior's flesh and blood, which is exactly what we're called to do, to become the Savior's flesh and blood by understanding what we participate in and seeing this whole resurrection experience in what we do. We are to be nailed to the cross then. We are to be raised also with Jesus. And we celebrate the Eucharist. We celebrate this Eucharist. We celebrate this Easter to be foot washers in a world that doesn't want its feet washed, that doesn't even want to look at the other person or their feet. But here we are, taking the long winding road of Easter reflecting on what Jesus is giving us, and then deciding how we are going to act because of it.
we stand now to renew our profession of faith. And so I ask you, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. One very concrete sign that we are committed to love one another is to pray for those in need. Heeding the commandment of love, we now pray. The church leaders will never shrink from their responsibility to bring the love of God to the ends of the earth. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those entrusted with civil authority will govern with justice and work to bring an end to poverty. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all mothers, especially our own, and for those who provide others with loving care and protection. Give them the unfailing love that Mary gave to Jesus and uphold them in times of anxiety and stress. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Bless the work of Catholic Charities to serve those in need, to advocate for justice, and to call all to do the same. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick will know the presence of the Holy Spirit. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those who have died, especially Brian Slaughter, Byron Slaughter, will be joyfully welcomed into the everlasting light of heaven. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. You sent your Son to lead us away from sin, O God of love and mercy. Hear the prayer of your people gathered to remember the covenant established in Christ's blood. We ask this in his name, he who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Because we're not able to gather your financial offerings uh, in the usual way, we invite you to uh, drop your offering in one of the metal boxes on the back of the pillar there by the baptismal font. Uh, those of you who are joining us from home, you're invited to uh, mail your offering to the parish office, or you may set up an automatic giving account online at oldstmarys.com. And we thank all of you for your generosity.
pray, sisters and brothers, that our offering may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with these offerings, so that purified by your grace, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, the universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, in paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Indeed, you are holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be made to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by that same Spirit to make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. Once again, he gave you thanks, and giving it to his disciples, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his coming again, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Glorious Martyrs, with St. Paul and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. 
May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful God, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, O mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Join in our voices, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look then not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us share with those around us some sign of the peace of Christ. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy and blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. As you come forward for communion, please follow the direction of the ushers who will sanitize your hands. As you are, come forward for communion, please receive the host in your hands. Uh, then step aside as you lower your mask to consume 
and then uh, put your mask back up and return to your place. And we thank you for your uh, cooperation.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning for our prayer and worship, whether you're here in person or at a distance. You know, I could tell there were more of us here in church today because I could hear more voices. And that's good. So hopefully this will continue to grow. Uh, we are hoping that the Archdiocese will increase our capacity limits uh, in the upcoming week. So let's pray for that. The Just One Item collection is next weekend, the third Sunday of the month. In shopping this week, consider purchasing something extra for our neighbors at uh, St. James Parish. Uh, just one item, a bar of soap, a roll of toilet paper, some toothpaste, a toothbrush, something like that, and place it in the baskets in the commons when you uh, come to church next Sunday. Reminder that reservations are required for uh, weekday and weekday masses in person. Uh, reservations can be made at the parish website, oldstmarys.com, or you may call the parish office to uh, register. Our masses will continue to be live streamed and uploaded to YouTube. Uh, it's also very important to, uh, in support of the ushers and greeters who are helping us uh, during these, these, uh, these months, these years, uh, that you arrive for mass at least five to ten minutes before mass begins so they have time to check you in and to seat you. So please, please try to arrive early for Mass. Uh, printed copies of the uh, weekly bulletin uh, have returned and they're available on the tables in the Commons, so please help yourself to that. We ask you to remain in your place until the closing hymn has uh, concluded and then follow the uh, directions of the ushers as they uh, dismiss you. Next month, uh, Old St. Mary's will officially, uh, Old St. Mary's and the Paulus Fathers here will uh, officially launch the Hope for the Future campaign. The Hope for the Future campaign will focus on long-term strategic priorities, which can be addressed uh, only through an extraordinary uh, fundraising effort. Uh, this is different than the annual Paulus appeal, which takes place each January. Uh, that appeal uh, provides the uh, Right, provide, helps provide for the operating, annual operating support of the Paulist Fathers. Uh, together, these two uh, efforts will strengthen our Paulist parishes and uh, communion uh, centers and ministries for years to come. So there'll be more information about that uh, next Sunday. And since this is Mother's Day, with the whole church standing, I invite you to extend a hand toward uh, those mothers who are present with us today as we pray a special blessing for them. And those of you joining us from home, I hope you can do the same. We thank you, God, for the gift of our mothers, for grandmothers and godmothers, for stepmothers and mothers-in-law. Send your spirit upon them. Heal, heal their pains and disappointments. Forgive all the needs that needs to be forgiven. Give to them the good which they have given to others. And welcome to your presence those who have died. Fill this world, O oh God, with a mother's love. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Well, happy Mother's Day to, uh, to all of you who have been celebrating today. The Lord be with you. And may the blessing of God come upon us and remain with us always. The blessing of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth praising God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
God has chosen me, God has chosen me to bring good news to the poor. God has chosen me, God has chosen me to bring new sight to those searching for light. God has chosen me, chosen me, and to tell the world that God's kingdom is near, to remove oppression and break down fear. Yes, God's time is near, God's time is near, God's time is near, God's time is near. God has chosen me, God has chosen me, to set a light and new fire. God has chosen me, God has chosen me, to bring to birth the new kingdom on earth. God has chosen me, chosen me, and to tell the world that God's kingdom is near, to remove oppression and break down fear. Yes, God's time is near, God's time is near, God's time is near, God's time is near. Time is near. 